Welcome back guys to yet another video. This one is for a family session. Uh, actually, it's for a, a baby announcement session. But, you know, I treat them all like their portrait sessions and, and then we include a few props here and there to differentiate them. So whenever there's kids involved, uh, it's always a little tougher because, you know, they're not there to cooperate with you, although some do that more than others, but check this out. So I'm using single point and recompose. I know you've heard me say that plenty of times in other videos if you watch them, but it's the best way that I have control over, over the focusing. Um, the eye focusing works pretty well, and maybe one day I'll learn to trust it but I still have, uh, maybe I have trust issues. I like the single point and recompose. Uh, I only use the uh, uh, other out focusing methods whenever there's moving subjects, like if they're walking. So if you ever photograph kids, you know you have to be super patient because they're not gonna look at you all the time, but you'll get some good ones, you know, especially if uh, the baby is relaxed and having a good time or happy or not hungry or something, right? Maybe some of you can look at these pictures and think, okay, he's using natural light. Actually, I'm using a little bit of flash. You don't really see that in any of the pictures because it's such a minimal setting. It really is just to have a little pop of light on their face. I have That's why my shutter speed is at 1 over 200. I don't use high speed sync. I don't think I'll ever use it. I know you can get some really dramatic looking shots uh, with a high speed sync and the flash. I just don't. That's not my style. I, I like more natural looking photos, I suppose. So I'm using the uh, AD200 from Godox. I think it's pretty much everybody's go-to uh, flash now, unless you're going for the, the more expensive pro photos. I, I, I can't knock the pro photos. I, you know, I've never used them. Uh, they're super expensive. Um, maybe they're better flashes. I don't know. I just know that the Godox are really great it works all the time and I love it. I used to use the uh, the pocket wizards and man, I remember the troubles I used to have with that. There was a certain order to turn on the flash and then the transmitter and I'm like, what is not working? But yeah, the, ever since I switched up to the Godox system, it's been awesome. I think the key thing, at least when it comes to the way I do things, is variety. So you want to give variety to the customers and you want to uh, have them love each every each and every picture. Um, I used to maybe think that only giving less would be better because overwhelming the client with more and more pictures would be uh, not necessarily well, it would be a bad thing. And and then I thought to myself, but it only really takes me another two seconds to edit another photo. I can edit these photos super, super quick. I mean, if you are taking the photos correctly, then, then it only takes you a few seconds to edit. And who am I to say that this smile, this looks better than that, you know? The, the, the smile looks a little crooked on this one, but maybe they like that crooked smile. So anyways, here I'm using uh, the focusing method that's not that's not a uh, single point, right? Because they're walking towards me. It's just uh, focusing on everything and it's focusing on his and her face right now. But it's set at 3.5 the aperture so as to get everybody in focus. So you'll notice that every time they're, they are moving, I, I switch it up to this focusing method. If you ever see me use, like right now, they're not moving and I have it still on that focusing method, it's because I didn't switch over to single point and I'm kind of trusting the camera to do its thing. And honestly, the camera does its thing and I should trust it more. It's just, like I said, I have trust issues. I don't know about you guys, but honestly, I like the look that a prime lens gives you more than a zoom lens, even though the uh, 70 to 200 2.8 aperture lens is amazing. The uh, 85 mil 1.4 or 1.8 is even more amazing when it comes to portraits. I, that's what I think. The problem is that with the 85 mil, especially with kids, you miss shots because they are moving around, they're not there to you know, cooperate with you. And so even though you get these really great shots, they're not 
that much better, I think, that I have to sacrifice the things that I can do with a 70 to 200 lens. Like I can zoom in and out, I can do a lot of things and get way more variety, way quicker. And you know, maybe I don't get my steps in with it, but I get a lot of variety, which is what I'm looking for. And quality, of course. Variety and quality. Oop, that kid just fell. She started crying after that, but we took a break. It took several attempts to get the sign to point forward, which is what we're trying to do right now. Like I said, sometimes this is a slow going when it comes to kids and you have to be patient. I think out of all the shots, maybe we got a couple, okay, right there, but that is in the way. And then the sign, you see how rapid fire, I'm, I'm rapid firing this and the sign's no longer facing and then it is facing and some shots, the sign is facing my way and some shots it's not. Uh, here, it's important to note if you're learning how to take photos is you gotta watch out for where the sun is. Obviously, the sun is behind them and it's not so much behind them because it's actually a little bit behind, it's behind them and a little bit to the left. It's so bright. Look at all, how bright it is. Generally, I don't really love those photos, but you know, I'd rather take it than not take it. So, you know, they're gonna like it if they look good, regardless of how bright it is. If you're a new photographer, you should probably consider making it easier on yourself and choosing the right time of day. Regardless of what time that is, it depends on the situation and the location you're in. Sometimes the sun will set behind the mountain way earlier than the sun is supposed to set. So therefore you should go to that location earlier, not right before sunset, because then it'll be really dark. So you have to kind of uh, gauge it and see where you're gonna be and what time is best to take photos. Once you get more comfortable with, uh, with taking pictures and lighting and all that, then you can go anywhere, anytime and get different kinds of shots that work really well. You just have to accept the fact that, hey, look, it's bright. I can't do anything about that. What some photographers might do though is they might uh, put the aperture super high, use high speed sync, and then compensate with flash power to kind of expose for the background and add light to them with the flash. That's, that's a good way of doing it. However, that gives you the kind of results that I'm not looking for. And that's what I'm saying when I say I like natural looking photos. If you want to go for that super flashy photo, then that's the way to do it. Take a picture of the background, set your settings up so that it's correct, the way it looks on the, the picture, and then just add light. How much light depends on how much you need to light up your subject. All right, anyways, here, look, uh, camera right is the windows or the area where the, where the natural light is coming in. Camera left is my flash with the max sphere, which is kind of bouncing a little bit of flash. It's not looking too flashy because again, I have it at very minimal settings, just enough to add light to the other side of their face. Um, that's, that's all that's doing. And so I'm getting a bunch of shots here. I'm not using a softbox uh, for two reasons. One, uh, one is because the wind will knock it over and it was super windy. Two, because the Max Sphere is so portable, so easy, and I only really use it to add a tiny bit of light. Whenever I need to have more light or stronger light or I want more directional light, then I'll whip out, I'll whip out the, the Mag Box, which I love, it's awesome. If you've made it this far into the video, then you're somebody interested in my videos and what I have to say. Uh, I've been showing you a lot of photo sessions. That's only because I don't really have any weddings right now uh, because of COVID. But starting in March, I have three in March, I have like four in April, or maybe five in April, sorry. And I have so many more the rest of the month. So once I get to those weddings, I am gonna make in-depth videos. I'm talking about how to photograph the getting ready, how to photograph the ceremony, 
like different parts to the videos where I'll show you and you'll be able to see all my settings the way you do here how to photograph a wedding I know there's a lot of beginners out there watching this I used to be you and you have a lot of questions why am I using this shutter speed why am I using that aperture if you ask me I will answer you back we can be friends on um, Instagram follow me on Instagram the link will be down below uh, message me here comment down below uh, you know I will get back to you and we can talk shop we can talk about photography and what gear you use and what gear I use I can basically tell you all the things that I did wrong all the things that I have done wrong recently which is a lot of things I am not perfect I wasted so much money on the wrong gear and and now I'm to the point where I'm happy with everything I've got with everything I'm doing so if you can subscribe to the channel I would really appreciate that these are all the photos I ended up editing I believe it was around 200 photos and uh, you can see the different variety of kids smiling some of them are repetitious sure but they're slightly different some of them are black and white so they're copies of other photos I like to give variety I like to give a lot of photos parents really appreciate that so thank you guys and I hope to see you again soon Thanks.